I, I, I take failures completely off the table, completely off the table. That's not going to happen. And the reason being is that the failures you saw in March was so idiosyncratic. No bank in America was built like the Silicon Valley Bank was built. So I would take that off the table. But you do bring up an interesting point on if we were to go 50 basis points, let's say, let's say the inflation is not under control, then the real question, Sri, will be when they do it, if they were to raise 50 basis points, what are they going to be, be saying at the time they do it? What's the outlook? Yes. So that, so to your point, I, I don't disagree with you that there, there could be weakness in the regionals at that point. But in terms of failures, they're off the table. Yeah, I mean, what we have to note here, uh, Gerard, that, I mean, plus 50, that, that's sort of an outlying, outlier uh, kind of call, yeah. uh, right? If anything, we're priced for pretty much fully for plus 25. In any case, though, uh, you, you know, uh, I'm thinking it's not going to be plus 50 basis points that's going to uh, trigger uh, uh, another small bank to, to blow up. I'm thinking more, uh, one, if we see this continuing exodus of money out, there goes their capital bases, uh, right? And then the other part is uh, the big eight financials, the biggest eight, right? They have to comply with new Basel III rules, bigger capital uh, buffers, right? The small guys don't, which theoretically leaves them more vulnerable and fragile, doesn't it? Uh, but, but, but I know here you actually think that the exodus, the outflow from deposits from these guys has stopped. What evidence, uh, what evidence do we have of that? Martin, you make some really good points, and uh, the evidence comes every Friday afternoon. It's called the H8 data, and if you look at this past Friday's data, the small bank deposits are growing. There's inflows into those banks, not outflows. And so for the last six to eight weeks, we've been seeing a steady increase in deposits in the small banks. The big banks, on the other hand, are seeing the outflows because of quantitative tightening. So the, the fear of what happened in March is, again, fading away. And the other thing, too, is that the banks also have access to lines of credit at the Federal Reserve, at the Federal Home Loan Bank, should they ever get into any dire trouble, which, again, we don't expect. But you also bring up something else, Martin, about the new regulatory requirements that are likely to be announced next week. And they are going to likely lead to higher capital requirements for the bigger banks. But we have to remember the vast majority of funding for the smaller banks, banks with less than 50 billion in assets, those banks, the vast majority is in insured deposits, less than $250,000, which are very sticky and very steady. Hi, I'm Emily Tan and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.